Welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about the rating system known as ELO. Um, what does it mean? When I started playing chess online in early 2021, I had no idea what the ratings were or how they worked. And I certainly didn't understand why it could be 1100 on one site and 1600 on another site. Um, most of us, I think, use these ratings as sort of a yardstick, either to measure our progress or to compare with other players. Um, for example, here on the screen, I have a screenshot of my rapid rating over the past 90 days or so um, on chess.com at the top. And I've added the, the orange line to the graph to show that there's been some slight improvement in 90 days. And at the bottom is my rapid ratings on leechess.org over the past 90 days, which just shows a slightly more market improvement. Um, but I didn't understand, so I did some reading, and I just want to quickly share what I found out in case you've been wondering the same thing. Um, first of all, uh, ELO is not an acronym. I thought it was because it's usually in all capitals. Um, it's named after the physics professor who came up with it, whose name is probably RPOD or RPAD, ELO. And the idea was to rank players or teams within a given pool of players or teams. Um, not necessarily rating their ability, but rating their ability relative to everyone else in that same group or pool. Um, and it's based on, obviously, past performance, and it changes as you go. When you win, you gain points, and your opponent who lost loses points. Uh, if they were really high rated, and you were really low rated, and you beat them, you gain a lot of points, and they lose a lot. If you're you know, relatively same rating, every win and loss doesn't lose or, or win as many points. Um, for example, if you're 1200 and you defeat a 400 rated player, you won't gain that many points. But if they beat you, you'll lose a lot of points because you should be able to beat a 400 rated player most of the time if your 1200 rating is accurate. Um, 12, uh, ELO isn't only used for chess, I found that out. It's used for various uh, competitive leagues, um, to some degree used for things like Scrabble, baseball, American college football. I believe it was used for the, uh, <clears throat> the BCS bowl system in American college football for a while, or at least a modified version of it. Um, and the ELO rating, uh, your ELO rating is only relevant to the particular organization in which you have that rating. Uh, that's why you can be, say, 1653 in FIDE, but 1720 in the U.S. Chess Federation, or whatever your country's chess federation is called. Um, and I believe FIDE actually still uses the ELO system, whereas the Chess Federation in the United States, and probably I think Australia and maybe others, have improved or changed their formula over the years. Um, I found out that Chess.com and Lee Chess do not use ELO. Uh, they actually use what's called the Glico system, which was uh, come up with later. Glico was invented by Mark Glickman as an improvement to ELO. The main difference that I found is what's called RD, or ratings deviation, and that measures the accuracy of each player's rating. Um, so, for example, if you have a low RD, a low number ratings deviation, that means the system believes your rating is very accurate. Um, the more that you play, the lower that number gets. So, for ex and, uh, so if you're playing rapid games every day, for example, on chess.com or Lee Chess, you will uh, begin to lose fewer points for losses and gain fewer points for wins. But if you stop playing for a while, your RD increases. The, the ratings deviation gets to be a bigger number, which means the system is not... Uh, convinced that your rating is accurate. So if you wait two or three weeks and then play another rapid game, your win or loss will result in a greater change of your rating. Um, as far as I could tell, chess.com is still using the original Glico system, possibly with their own modifications, whereas Lee Chess uses Glico 2, which has, uh, it's an improved formula. It's supposed to be more accurate. Um, and they and that's why on leechess.org when you start uh, playing you start with a rating of 1500 because that's what max glickman who came up with it said that this that's what the origin of the rating should be then when you lose your rating drops when you win your rating goes up um whereas on chess.com 
I've, I mean, you basically get to choose your rating when you sign up. You say, I'm a beginner, it rates you at 400. You say, I'm pretty good, it rates you at 1200. You say, you're an expert, it rates you higher. But that's supposed to all sort out as you play games. Uh, if you say you're an expert and it gives you a rating of, I don't know, 1600 or something or 2000, and then you start, you lose three or four games in a row, your, your rating will start to tank. Um, but anyway, uh, I hope that helps. That's, uh, that's what I found out about these systems. So when people say, what's your ELO? Uh, basically what they're saying is, what's your rating? And a more accurate question would be, what's your rating within a given organization or league or site? So what is your FIDE rating? What is your USCF rating? What's your rating on chess.com? What's your rating on Lee Chess? Because again, it only measures your ability relative to other players in a specific pool of players. So that's why my rating on Lee Chess is different than it is on chess.com. And if I eventually join the United States Chess Federation and play rated games, my rating there will be different than it is on those sites. Um, just as I conclude, just wanted to brag just a little bit. I have been improving in my rapid stats over the last 90 days. Part of it is due to my study. And uh, part of it's due to just being more careful. And I actually think this channel has helped. As I talk through these, the ideas of the different chess games and point out my own blunders publicly, I think that helps me to be more careful. So anyway, thanks for watching.